G'day folks, Sapper here with another World of Warships video. Welcome to In-Depth, the series with theory crafting and analysis where we see how deep rabbit holes can get. I don't know about you, but I get excited about new ship lines, although Soviet ones less so. I enjoy progressing up the line for the first time, getting to know each ship, even the bad ones. I often see discussions about the great navies of the World War II period, and I enjoy debating and discussing the merits of theoretical or paper ships that are used to complete the lines as much as the lines themselves. Today I want to talk about a nation that's missing and that could complete an entire line without resorting to paper, and even a second line with a couple of theoretical additions. This nation is often forgotten in World of Warships and in the annuals of history. In this video I'm going to give you a broad overview over an entire nation, or more accurately, the Commonwealth of Nations, as a possible tech tree for World of Warships. Further on down the track I'll do individual videos about each of the lines, as well as discuss the premium options. Different Commonwealth nations contributed some of the largest amounts of manpower and resources in both World Wars, particularly in view of the sizes of their economies or populations. Often their achievements are either awarded to the British Empire as a whole, or just forgotten entirely. Fun fact, at the close of World War II, the Commonwealth combined had a sizeable navy that was one of the largest in the world, and a major tactical and strategic factor for the Allies. Some caveats. The Commonwealth for the purpose of this video includes all nations that were a member of the Commonwealth at that time, including countries such as India, Pakistan, Malaysia, Singapore, and South Africa. I always attempt to include ship classes that are spread of these nations operated. However, I prioritise progression of the tech line first and foremost. For premiums, a variety of nations and ships are the priority. INS Mysore is a currently work in progress. Uh, this was confirmed by Wargaming to Spiel Times. To quote them is almost confirmed, so it'll be there. Delhi is a possible ship. Uh, Wargaming is working on this at the moment. A link to the article will be in the description. A lot of ships will share similarities with Royal Navy ships. That's fine. Hayter isn't the same as Jarvis. Perth isn't the same as Leander. And don't get me started on the Pan-Asian destroyer line or the US battleship split candidates. I considered the ship a Commonwealth ship if it had a Commonwealth crew, was funded by a Commonwealth nation, or was a member of one of the respective precursor to the Commonwealth navies. For example, the New Zealand division for the Royal New Zealand Navy, or... Royal Navy stations in various dominions. I understand that some people would want India to sit somewhere else, either on its own or otherwise. But from a military and political perspective, at the time they were very much part of the Commonwealth and their equipment aligns with the Commonwealth. I haven't done this tech tree in isolation. I borrowed and adjusted all sorts of different ideas from proposals and ideas on warship forums, Reddit and all over the place. If you end up enjoying this video, I encourage you to go and check them out. Some of them are amazing and crazy. And finally, this is my proposal. Of course there are going to be some ships and things that you disagree with. That's okay. I like different opinions and I'm always happy to engage and have a bit of a back and forth, even banter. But just keep in mind that this is my proposal. This video is as much to show that it can be done, rather than saying that it has to be done this way. Go nuts down in the comments section. On anything you see in this video. Let me know what you think. I want to read it. With all that in mind, here is my Commonwealth Tech Tree proposal. The Commonwealth Tech Tree already has three ships, and by using these ships we can see some common traits that we can directly translate into the Tech Tree. The Tier 3 Vampire, for example, is a pretty typical Tier 3 destroyer, with normal smoke, floaty guns, and some torpedoes. Perth, a light cruiser at Tier 6, Perth is similar to Royal Navy's Leander, however doesn't have a heel, has access to HE, creeping smoke and plane options. Hader, a destroyer at Tier 7. Hader is similar to Royal Navy's Jarvis, however only has one torpedo launcher, access to creeping smoke and improved concealment. So the common traits we get from these ships are that they are similar to Royal Navy options, however once at mid-tiers have access to creeping smoke over other types of smoke. So let's get cracking. All good tech trees begin with a Tier 1 cruiser. Indus. Indus was an enlarged Grimsby-class sloop that served with the Royal Indian Navy and is much like any other Tier 1. Other ships for reference for the Grimsby-class include, from Australia, Yarra, Swan, Parramatta and Warrego. 
and for New Zealand Station, Leith and Wellington. Commonwealth easily gets to tier 10 destroyers, so let's begin with those. Commonwealth destroyers are a variety of ships that begun life as Royal Navy destroyers and were then modified, or separate classes to those used in the Royal Navy tree. Often these ships were kept in service for longer, so had more modern ASW or electronics. In this proposal, the Commonwealth destroyer line will have creeping smoke, haters hydro from tier 5, and leverage heavily on utility and concealment over DPM when compared to Royal Navy. Some additional utility is thanks to added DFAA or speed boost slot from tier 7 and being able to swap creeping smoke for radar at tier 8. Depending on the implementation of submarines, Commonwealth destroyers should excel at ASW as many were often ASW focused. The lower DPM of the destroyers will be somewhat mitigated with higher alpha strike but is only situationally useful. To enable the higher alpha strike to work, Commonwealth destroyers will have slightly improved shell ballistics. The key point is that Royal Navy destroyers should win most one-on-one -on -one engagements unless the Commonwealth destroyer is initiating the engagement or initially getting an upper hand. The balancing factor in all this will be adjusting Commonwealth health pools and gun reload to ensure differences while keeping Royal Navy destroyers generally better in a straight-up gunfight. I'll go in-depth on all of these aspects in the Commonwealth Destroyer video, including why I picked the ships at tiers, consumable ranges, durations, and cooldowns. The primary reason I picked the following ships was for progression to make sense up the line. There ends up being a lot of Australian entries. This isn't a product of any bias, but simply made sense with regards to progression. So onto the line itself, and please forgive any pronunciation errors. Tier 2, Champlain. Champlain was an S-Class destroyer, and S-Class were used by both Australia and Canada. Tier 3, Waterhen. Waterhen was a W-Class, and W-Class destroyers were used by Australia. Tier 4, Stuart. Australia got Stuart after the Royal Navy was finished with her. She's a late World War I destroyer that was upgraded and kept in service until 1946. She's a good link from the low-tier World War I destroyers to the mid-tier 1930s destroyers. Tier 5. Skeena. Skeena was an A-class destroyer in service with the Royal Canadian Navy. Tier 6. Chaudière. Chaudière was a H-class destroyer similar to Skeena and saw service in the Royal Canadian Navy. Tier 7. Jan van Rybeck. Jan was a South African W-class destroyer that remained in service until late 1975. I felt she was an important addition over the tribal class, as we already have Hader as a premium T7, and I wanted to keep Hader special. Yarn was kept in service for a very long time, which means that it links the line by being the last entry with single turrets, but has increased utility with an added speed boost or DFAA slot. Tier 8, Napier. Napier was an N-class destroyer for the Royal Australian Navy. Napier is the beginning of the Commonwealth Twin Turrets and begins Commonwealth Destroyer's ability to equip radar instead of creeping smoke. Tier 9, Battle. Different types of battle class saw use by Australia and Pakistan. The class is distinctive thanks to having only two twin turrets. Tier 10, Vendetta. Australia ended up operationally running with modified daring class destroyers right up until the late 1970s and as a training platform until 1986. Overall, the Commonwealth destroyer line should provide better spotting over most gunboat focused lines, but only win these encounters against them when controlling the terms of the engagement where higher alpha strike and their tools can give them the edge. In this sense, I think that Commonwealth destroyers could offer a different type of gameplay and will be quite distinctive compared to Royal Navy. For the next line, Commonwealth Cruisers. Commonwealth nations often operated old ships and designs for longer periods of time and upgraded them to stay current. The Commonwealth Cruiser line reflects this in many areas. The line should play on Perth's strengths of Creeping Smoke and HE. The trade-off for having HE is that the ships don't have access to the heel that Royal Navy receives, but the standard cruiser options at tiers 9 and 10. The Citadel and Armour setup will need to be adjusted to compensate for the lack of the heel, more in line with US light cruisers as opposed to Royal Navy. Commonwealth cruiser shell ballistics should be improved over their Royal Navy brethren, enabling them to use their lower DPM, higher alpha strike, similar in style to the destroyers, and differentiating them from both the Royal Navy and US Navy light cruisers. 
Commonwealth cruisers should have access to Hydro from Tier 4, Creeping Smoke from Tier 5, and Radar from Tier 8 in the smoke slot. For more details, keep an eye out for the upcoming Commonwealth cruiser video. So, Tier 2, Pelorus. Pelorus class were a series of protected cruisers with ships Pioneer and Psyche, serving with the Royal Australian Navy in World War I. Tier 3, Challenger. Challenger class consisted of two protected cruisers, Challenger and Encounter, who served with Australia Station in the early 1900s and into World War I. Tier 4, Chatham. Chatham class ships were operated by Australia and New Zealand and served until the late 20s and early 30s. Chatham class begins the transition from protected cruiser designs towards more modern light cruisers. Tier 5, Dunedin. Dunedin was a Dana class light cruiser in service with New Zealand and saw use well into the 1940s. Tier 6, Hobart. Hobart was a modified Leander class light cruiser, many of which saw service with the Royal Australian Navy. The normal Leander class also saw service with New Zealand and India, albeit with different modifications. Tier 7, Bologna. Bologna class cruisers saw service with New Zealand and Pakistan. Bologna is a bit of an oddity of the line being armed with 133mm guns historically. For continuity, have 152s as an upgrade or remove the 133s entirely, keeping it to the premium version, Black Prince. Tier 8, Swiftshore. Swiftshore, originally HMS Minotaur, not to be confused with the Royal Navy Tier 10, was commissioned as Ontario and saw service with Canada until 1958. Tier 9, Tiger. Tiger class were enhanced versions of the Swiftshore class. In this case, keep them in their earlier setup with three triple 152s, continuing the Commonwealth Cruiser theme. Tier 10, Bellerophon. Based on the 1124 Alpha design, Bellerophon has four triple 152 turrets and follows the theme of the rest of the Commonwealth Cruiser line. She should be similar in many regards to Royal Navy's Minotaur, however, with triple turrets in the Commonwealth flavor. Overall, Commonwealth cruisers should have far less DPM than Royal Navy cruisers, thanks to slower reloads and more flexible smoke. The flip side is that they are able to set fires and have an improved HE alpha when compared to other light cruisers. By leaning on the reload and smoke differences, Commonwealth light cruisers would find their own niche. The care will need to be taken from the perspective of smoke and HE, thus leaning on reload and alpha so that we don't have a line of small and Kutuzovs, but a line of balanced light cruisers, like Perth. So onto the third line and a controversial subject, aircraft carriers. Don't go leaping to the down vote. Commonwealth aircraft carriers should be one of the last lines added to the game for any nation. But at least they existed, more so than the German ones we're getting. So I'll at least go through how they could work for the Commonwealth. Contrary to popular belief, Commonwealth nations did run aircraft carriers. For the World of Warships time period, the two contending nations are Canada and Australia, albeit Australia's being post-war. Due to the limited number, the line would begin at Tier 6. Commonwealth aircraft carriers should have a limited number of planes per flight and wing. Their payloads would be limited in number and deal average damage, but the planes are a bit quicker. With the implementation of submarines, Commonwealth aircraft carriers should have a strong number of high-quality, air-dropped depth charges, reflecting their focus on ASW. For more details, see my aircraft carrier video after it's released. Tier 6, Ruler. The Ruler class were Bogue carriers that served with the Royal Navy under Lend-Lease. HMS Puncher and Nabob were crewed by the Royal Canadian Navy. Tier 8, Colossus. Colossus class aircraft carriers were built by the Royal Navy and served with Canada and Australia. Tier 10, Majestic. The Majestic class were essentially enhanced Colossus class carriers and saw service with Canada, Australia and India. Overall, Commonwealth aircraft carriers should lean into their smaller size and smaller number of planes, but have a little bit of extra utility with their ASW capabilities and plane speed. Finally, let's take a quick look at premium ships. First, let's look at those that already exist. Vampire, Perth, and Hayter. We also know Delhi and Mysore are in development, almost confirmed, so we'll pop them in there as well. The priority for premium ships was for a nice spread of nations and types, as well as a significant story. Again, I will cover these in depth in a later video. Tier 3, Niobe. 
Niobe was the first large ship Canada operated, otherwise is a pretty standard Tier 3 protected cruiser. Tier 4, New Zealand. Standard Tier 4 battlecruiser setup, repair and heal. Tier 5, Saskatchewan. An F-class destroyer that served with distinction for the Royal Navy and Canada. Diomede. As per the Tech Tree Dunedin, but tweaked. Tier 6, Sioux. V-class destroyer launched in 43 with a long career. Malaya. Malaya was a Queen Elizabeth class battleship paid for by the Federated Malay States. Tier 7, Australia. A county class heavy cruiser that served with Australia. Black Prince. A Bologna class light cruiser with 133mm guns that served with New Zealand. Tier 8, Ontario. Ontario was a swift shore class that served with Canada from 1944. Canada. Canada is a theoretical 15-inch King George V battleship. Kyberon. Kyberon is a Q-class destroyer that served with Australia. Tier 9. Kyber. Kyber was a battle class that served with Pakistan from 1956. Overall, there are many options for premium ships. However, I think this current spread is a great start and has a nice variety. If there is a Commonwealth premium ship that you really want, let me know down in the comments section and what's special about it, what sort of flavour you think it should have, and I'll have a look into it. I'm happy to add any into the Commonwealth premiums video I'm working on, particularly if the ship has got a good enough story and offers something that I haven't covered. A good example is I haven't even considered submarines, so there's definitely some possibilities there. Overall, the Commonwealth should have a tech tree in World of Warships. Compared with many of the lines that are in the game, Commonwealth can easily put more real ships with more real history down as contenders. At a minimum, the Commonwealth easily gets a full destroyer line, with options for a split later on for single and dual turrets. Yes, there really are that many destroyer options. As I've demonstrated, cruisers and even aircraft carriers are completely viable. I'd do aircraft carriers as a line as opposed to premiums because there's always a risk that with premiums wargaming would make them a little bit broken. I'll be following up on this video with a video for each line and one for the premiums, going into more detail on each ship with comparisons to existing in-game ships for reference. I really hope you folks have enjoyed this look at the Commonwealth tech tree. I've put a lot of effort into this and have bounced ideas off many people. A lot of the bits and pieces you look at and think, oh, that works is thanks to the efforts of others in critiquing and offering better alternatives. Honestly, thank you to everyone who helped, no matter how small the detail. This video is to plain and simply show that the Commonwealth Tech Tree isn't such a crazy idea, and in fact has more real ships than many nation lines already in the game. I would love to see it implemented at some point, but we are still waiting on a couple of lines yet. Italian battleships when wargaming. Anyway, feel free to go nuts down in the comments section. I'd be really happy to see your thoughts on what you've seen here, uh, what you'd like to see from a Commonwealth tech tree and why. I'm always eager for input and always happy to consider changes. While I know it's a long shot, I really want Wargaming to get to work on a proper Commonwealth of Nations tech tree. Our best chance of getting anything Commonwealth is presenting a set of cohesive ideas as a whole that makes sense within the game. And that's exactly what I've done here. I still don't know why we are getting German aircraft carriers before a complete Italian tree, Commonwealth lines, or even splits for the Japanese, United States, or Royal Navies, but it is what it is. Thanks for watching, take it easy, and I'll catch you in the next one.